All right, my friends, now it's Halloween time. I'm gonna share with you a story of growing up in Maine. All right, so this is a spooky story for you who like Halloween and spooky, spooky. So I grew up on an island, as you may or may not know, in uh, Casco Bay, Maine, Peaks Island. The most populous island in, uh, in, in at least Casco Bay, I'm not sure about the whole state. But anyway, on Peaks Island, we had you know, four or 500 people in the winter and uh, 1,500, 2,000 people in the summer, something like that. But uh, in uh, probably 78, 77, 78, maybe something like that, there uh, that's when Stephen King's movie Salem's Lot came out. You remember Salem's Lot? I mean, maybe I was 10, so that'd be 1980, I think. Anyway, so I had a good friend of mine, Matt, who lived on the other side of the island. And to, to go to Matt's house, you could either go around through Island Ave, which is kind of like the, uh, the perimeter of the island, or you could cut through the woods in, uh, in Snake Alley. And so basically he had my house, he had Seamus Watson's house across the street, and he had a couple of houses, and then he had a bunch of woods between Seamus's house through Snake Alley by the school, and then you cut through the school and kind of go down to his house. So depending on how you felt that day, in terms of were you scared or not, uh, <laughs> you would go on Island, is Island Ave, I say Island Ave, around the perimeter, which it took a lot longer, or through Snake Alley. All right, so long the story short, I remember watching Salem's Lot at Matt's house, and I've never been a, a scary movie fan, never. Uh, but anyway, in, uh, and in Maine in the wintertime, it's, it gets dark early, man. It gets dark, like, I mean, it's like four o'clock, it's dark. And, uh, and I was, I never, until Maddie, my daughter, told me this yesterday, why that happened. I always attributed it to, because Maine was on the east, of uh, the uh, eastern time zone, and what happened, I had something to it. It's also because Maine's north, and in the northern you know, place, you get uh, longer days in the summer and longer nights in the wintertime. I, I never knew that, but she goes, yeah, that's why Alaska's you know, sometimes always light in the, in the summertime and always dark in the winter. I said, oh, man, that makes sense. So in Maine, because it's so far to the north, you get some long-ass winters. I mean, the nights, I mean, like I said, it gets dark like at 4, and it stays dark till I don't know, 7 or something like that. In the summertime, the sun comes up like five in the morning, which is awesome, and then it doesn't go down until nine. It's fantastic. I literally never knew it was attributed to being in the northern part of the uh, of the hemisphere, I guess, uh, until my daughter told me that yesterday. I was like, oh, I was just thought it had something to do with the east, the eastern side of the east time zone. Hey, he's 49 years old and still learning stuff. But anyway, so I played football because uh, I sucked at football. I hated hitting people. I hated being hit, but I, I don't know. I just always loved football, so I figured I'd play. When I didn't play with the pads on, it was pretty good. You put the pads on, all of a sudden I didn't like it. But anyway, I remember I was like, yeah, this is awesome because it would get dark and we'd have lights where we played. And so we'd always have to call practices early. It was fantastic. I always loved that, the winter, you know, getting towards the winter time in Maine because we call practices early because I'm dark again. But it's creepy, dude. It's creepy. Seven o'clock, it's pitch dark. Five o'clock, it's basically dark. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's scary. So I'm watching Sam's lot with this guy Matt over his house. And I can't remember my, I can't remember who, if anyone else was with us. And I, and you, man, they had this part in that movie. So the two kids are walking through the woods. It's probably up in Bangor where Stephen King's from, something like that. And uh, and one kid gets, yeah, I guess, bitten by a vampire. So I, we don't know what happened, but he just disappears. And, uh, and the other kid goes home, but he can't find his brothers. There's two kids, two brothers. And he can't find his brothers. Like, dude, what happened? Hey, long story short, uh, he's like, well, I don't know what happened to Johnny, whatever the brother's name was. And he goes home, and mom's like, what happened to Johnny? He's like, I don't know. He's back in the woods. So they get a search party. They can't find him. And everyone's like, what the hell is going on? Because they're walking through the woods, and, uh, and well, something happened to old Johnny. Wait, later on that night, <laughs> Uh, the kid, you know, Bobby goes to bed and he's like, where's Johnny? Oh, no. And later on that night, he has a knock on the window. Or a scratch on the window. That's what it was, a scratch on the window. And Bobby goes, opens up the shades, opens up the blinds, and there's Johnny floating, saying, knocking on the window, scratch on the window, saying, he's like floating in the air, saying, let me in, let me in. And I, I don't, I, you know, Johnny's his little brother, I think. Bobby's the older brother. And I can't remember what happened after that. I, I think he might have opened the one. I can't remember. Anyway, he was a vampire. So he's like, let me. And uh, the graphics back then were horrible. So if you're used to the new CGI and all that, you'll look back at this and laugh your tail off because it's horrible. Even back then, it was pretty bad. 
but he's like scratching. Let me in. Let me in. Woo! And he's got his teeth like that, his face all white like a vampire. The problem was my brother, uh, my little brother, five years younger than me, uh, he looked like a vampire. <laughs> he had that big widow's peak, big dark hair. He looked like that kid, Johnny from Sales Art. He says, so I'm going, anyway, long story short, I'm going through Snake Alley after seeing this, trying to be a tough kid. And I said, I just, I'll never forget, I said, I can't. I, so I flew through Snake Alley. I said, I am done. Scared off my butt, flying, looked on my shoulder. I'm, uh, uh, I'm breathing hard, so I stopped to take a breath. And I'm listening, I said, oh, I'm just, man, I was in pure panic. <sighs> flying, thinking that there's a vampire behind me, gonna get me like they got old Johnny there. So I finally make it home, and I, I tell you, it's dark, remember, it's dark early there. And I think this is a Sunday night and it gets quiet on Peaks Island. That used to scare the hell out of me. It'd be so, there's no cars, there's no traffic, there's no street lights. You know, all you'd hear is a fog horn. I think on a Sunday night, the last boat would be 715. So there's no boat horns, there's no, all you hear is some fog horns on occasion. No cars, no people walking around. Friggin' scary, dudes. So remember, I didn't have a TV either. So it's like, there's no noise. Oh, man. It's just dark. Ugh makes me freaked out thinking about it fog would roll in I think that's what happened with Johnny and Bobby as the fog was rolling in too when he said let me in and uh okay that was weird um anyway so it's freaking scary and anyway for like weeks I was terrified of my brother becoming a vampire and knocking on the window going let me in let me in Woo! That scared me to death. I remember having panic about that movie, and I never watched the whole movie. I couldn't do it. One day later on, when I was older, I said, I've got to read the book, because I said, if I, I just had to do it. It's like one of the things that you got to tackle your fear. So I said I had to read the book. And I read the book, and, it was, and I, I, don't, I don't remember being all that scared by it. I mean, as an adult by then, I think. I, I can't remember. I remember I got a little bit scared, but it wasn't that bad. It was a, kind of like a good scare, I guess. But man, that is my Halloween story. I will never forget that as long as I live flying through Snake Alley. Let's just put it this way. Anytime I went over to Matt's house and I had to go leave at night when it got dark on Peaks Island, I never went through Snake Alley again. I went around Island Ave. And if I took my bike, I'd go around Island Ave. Because I said, at least see Island Ave, you had, had, you had the street lights. So at least you had the street lights there. But man, I never went through Snake Alley because I said, dude, I don't know what's working out there. But man, if there's a vampire out there, he's gonna get me and next, or he's gonna get my brother. Or it might be my brother, maybe he got my brother. Next thing you know, I'm gonna be turned to a vampire. <laughs> Sounds silly, but dude, that scared me to death. Even during Halloween, I said, I'm not going through Snake Alley. No way, no how, because I was freaking terrified of that. Sad thing is, Snake Alley's no more. You know, the rich people moved down there to Peace Island and they bought up all the land. And I guess, I, look, I don't know, it's, it doesn't exist anymore, my understanding. Uh, some of the people I used to know on Facebook who were friends of mine back then, and I don't do Facebook anymore, so I haven't kept in touch with them. Uh, but my understanding with Snake Alley has been removed, uh, which is too bad because uh, it'd be fun to go back there and see Snake Alley and where I used to uh, be scared. Your buddy Josh, terrified of creepy monsters coming to get me. Ah! I will see you.